Mm, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to Rumble Team Wi-Fi Battle with yours truly, of course, the Scavenger. And uh, yeah, today we're going to do a bit of a lazy upload due to um, short on time, really. So, <laughs> I had two very, very fun Yu-Gi games the other day and decided that I'm probably going to upload both of them for that very reason. And I'm going to start off with Raymond's Battle with the Flaming Axel and his link to his channel will be linked down below, of course. And looking to his team here, we got Tentacruel, Bronzong, Porygon, Galventula, Beedrill, and Hariyama. Hariyama is not that common, and I uh, was really excited to see that. And outside that, I see Bronzong working really well on this tier due to the Mammoth Swine. And I myself is using Rotom, Toxicroak, Empoleon, Hydreigon, Choice Bandit Machamp, and of course Mega Aerodactyl, which actually was a Pokemon that I wanted to use for quite some time, but haven't found a synergy to make that work. Now, this synergy is not it, but um, it has been done on par at least. It has done some good work, and its speed actually makes sure that you can outspeed a lot of things, which is important. Even a lot of 100 base Scarfer is, is on par with, which is important to know. Also, mind you, um, Toxicroak and Rotom is actually thanks to Elias who forget on Twitter. Uh, he mentioned that at least Rotom was a very, very nice niche in case I wanted to go against the Mammoth Swine since my team is rather weak against it. Um, it tends to be a lot of teams from weak to Mammoth Swine. So, yeah, with all this, my guys, let's go. Also, I predicted him to lead with Galventula, so I thought, you know, that I was safe. <laughs> well, that is really not what happened. I was really hoping to burn Galventula or Volt Switch on and let him set up to stick with anything. He's actually going to lead off with the Hiriyama. And as of this point, there was no reason for me of really switching out. I am actually a very, very defensive uh, Rotom since I actually was, like I said, designed for a Mammoth Swine. So, what we're going to do here is try to go after this for a Will O Wisp. Now, he will see that one coming. I know it's risky to go in for will o but at the same time, since I didn't see a Flame Orb activate, I felt that it's very likely it's Thick Bat instead. So the Porygon will come in, and there is really not a whole lot happening here. Uh, I don't want to stay in a potential adaptability try attack, so I need to find a way to get out of this. Um, the residual damage is there, which is nice, I guess, but at the same time, like I said, try attack will hurt, and will hurt a lot. So I'm much better going into try will the Empoleon. And, uh, well, this tri-attack will at least show that he's not specs, which is important, but he will score me a paralyzation, which is kind of annoying, kind of annoying. Um, so at this point, I do believe I'll try to go for Stealth Rocks. Uh, I was hoping that he would show me that he's scarfed in some fashion. Uh, unlucky for me, just switched out, I guess that would prove that he's scarfed, but I didn't act on it right there and then. So, uh, anyway, here comes the self rock, which of course is nice. Now, I was predicting his Galventula would go for a potential stick web against me, so I decided to stay near, and that was pretty much a bad call, honestly, because he'll go directly for Thunder, and um, yeah, that's that's a dead Empoleon. That's, that pretty much shows me that it's probably specs, honestly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go to Gaius, which is my champ, the choice man variant. And I can take a potential Thunder, no doubt, and this of course shows me that it's very, very likely specs. Uh, but the thing is here, he scores Paralyzation yet again. Uh, I do break through, luckily, for the Dynamic Punch, which is super, super nice. And of course, that is very, very close of killing the Galvangela. And there is no reason for me to stop doing uh, <laughs> the Dynamic Punches. So I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, I thought that it's very likely that he'll bring the Tentacruel, and even so, I should do a good chunk of damage no matter what, really. Because he needs to get rocks out of the way, since he actually decided to uh, almost fodder, really, the <laughs> that Galventula. If it doesn't pull a Rapid Spin, then Galventula is gone. So you see there, I do a 50% hit, so I knew that I could just keep going and he will eventually die. Luckily for me, he hits himself with confusion, which means that he's in range of dynamic punch, but I am fully paralyzed. And that's very, very unfortunate, because he has to get that spin off, and of course now he's gonna showcase that he'll actually break through. No, he actually hits himself yet again, which is super unfortunate, but due to the recovery he got from the Black Sludge, I am now in no range of taking him out. And um, that kind of sucks, actually. That really, really, really sucks. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep going. He finally snaps out, and he's gonna go for a rapid spin. Um, not killing me, of course, but at the same time, now the Stealth Rock is gone, and I have no way of setting them up again. Um, and that's a dead Tentacruel, at least. So, yeah. 
as of right there and then you know I felt that that was very very bad exchange and here is the Beedrill now I do have access to the bullet punch so I will preserve my champ for later since I am banned and hopefully I can break through something and ghost ball seems to be the way to go um, he has Leon show me Felstinger here which I was probably very lucky that I actually decided to switch out because that was not a boost I wanted to deal with really really not uh, so Felstinger will do just about nothing here and uh, even if he goes for poison jab, he risks the chance of getting, of course, um, burned. So what we're going to do now is predict his switch into Porygon, and I myself is going to go for a Volt Switch. And as of here, right here and then, I really, really thought this was a good option. Um, never, like I said, thought too much about Porygon C being Scarf, because I was thinking it's still 90 base, Aerodactyl should outspeed, I believe, Mega Aerodactyl definitely outspeed, so what I decided to do is bring <laughs> my Mega Aerodactyl thinking that, you know, I'm gonna outspeed, I have no issue here, I should just go guns blazing. And that's a very, very cute idea, consider that afterwards he actually outspeed with two. Yeah, he outspeed with two base speed if he's timid, so yeah, <laughs> that was really, really unfortunate. And the worst part of that is, of course, that I have now nothing for his bronze on. Um, and I can't switch out on it because I know it's gonna set up rocks. So I basically have to keep going. I have to keep attacking, and of course I won't do any damage. And I don't pack the crunch, which probably would have been a bit nicer. But like I said, there's nothing I can do. I just have to keep going for Aqua Tails and just do the little damage I can do. Um, he is definitely, if I had to make a guess, uh, levitate. So for no reason we're going for Niku if I packed it, which I don't. So there's a jar ball, and that's Aerodactyl gone. So that was really, really a waste <laughs> of Aerodactyl, honestly. Um, should not have done that play against Paragon. Should definitely not have done that. Um, but then again, you know, stuff like that do happen eventually. Uh, I'm gonna go to Belmog now, which is, of course, my Hydreigon. And the Dark Pulse seems to be the safest move here. Um, I didn't really overcompensate, or rather, I forgot about this Hariyama. So while that Pokemon enters the fray, I'm basically just gonna get some resisted damage on it, which is just about nothing, which of course means that that thing is Assault Vest. So yeah, um, I need to get out of here. Uh, I should probably have gone for Draco just to stay right at it, but I did actually have Dragon Pulse thinking about it. So anyway, I do predict a potential fake out yet again, but it's actually gonna go for knockoff. Which kinda sucks, because that puts me in a very bad range of potentially not living the rocks on the next switching. So he's gonna go back to his bronze song, I'm just gonna go for a Will-O-Wisp here, hoping that it actually wants to stay in. Uh, because denting Hariyama will be important, uh, but unlucky for me, he's actually gonna bring the bronze song, and I just need to take that thing out. And like I said, I am probably not able to take potential stealth rock damage on the switching, so I decided to go for an overheat, pretty much sacking the Rotom right now. And I'd say Rotom did a fair, fair challenge here, and then definitely stepped out on part of the game, but um, there was really nothing I could do there. I just had to accept that this is probably going to lose it. So he's going to bring back the Beedrill, and like I said, there is really, really nothing I can do. I hope he goes for a Fell Stinger again, but he's just going to finish it up with a Poison Gap. So the thing is now, uh, I have nothing here to outspeed my, on his Beedrill. So all I have is, of course, that uh, Gaius Bullet Punch will be enough to take it out. Which would have been immensely funny if it did, but sadly it doesn't. And uh, he's gonna go for Fell Stinger, so he's gonna get that Magnetic Boost, which is super, super annoying. And pretty much from here on out, there is a complete sweep. There is really nothing I can do to stop his Beedrill from destroying my team. So I gotta bring Toxic Rogue, which has been in the back, and I don't pack the Sucker Punch. But something has happened. He is gonna miss the be the drill run, <laughs> which of course is super unfortunate. I mean, that's a five percent chance of actually missing. That's <laughs> that's really bad. <laughs> so anyway, due to that, we're actually gonna change this battle around, and I actually fixed Sucker Punch after this. Uh, for that very reason alone, that was really really bad. So anyway, I'm just gonna decide to sack off Belmog. Or rather, I, was no, I know I was going to go for a fake out no matter what, but I wanted to force him to go for a close combat. Uh, because if he'd done that, then uh, my Drain Punch will kill him. So just going for Dragon Pulse, getting the damage on there, which should do around 40%. Uh, 
an extra close to 50, but I think that's actually, that's the round area where I do believe Rain Punch will take it out. So he's going for close combat, losing of course major, major defenses to his Hiryama. And my last Pokemon is the Toxic Rogue, it's all going to come down to whether or not Rain Punch can take him out. Now, he will of course switch out to his, um, what do you call it, the Galventula, which don't have any move that hits uh, Toxic Rogue super effectively, I knew that, so just there was no risk of me going in like this. So, um, yeah. Basically, he's gonna switch that in, sack it, get things back to defenses to um, his Hariyama, and then hope for the best. Uh, I don't know if I agree with this play, though. I think he would have been better off trying to uh, go for Thunder later on with his um, Galventula, since it does have speed. But anyway, ho is gonna come in back again, and this is, of course, his last Pokémon. And it is all gonna come down to whether or not the Drain Punch can take him out. I do pack the Gunk Shot, but I feel that it's a bit too risky and the Brain Punch will actually be enough. So, Raymond, thank you so much for this battle, and I'm really sorry about that drill run miss, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my fiancé coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, Raymond, like I said, thank you so much for this battle, and uh, as you guys saw, it was very obvious that uh, I should not have won this battle. His miss with drill run really, really destroyed him. <laughs> Other than that, I think he had a game. Um, his Porygon C being Scarfed and basically outspeeded my um, um, Aerodactyl was something I didn't foresee and it paid me dearly because it just kept me from actually, of course, outspeeding his Beedrill from there on out and there was really nothing I could do since Beedrill actually Oko's the Hydreigon. It, uh, it can't take out the Machamp from that range. And the Toxic Crow can take the Drill Run, and of course Rodan can barely take that Poison Jab. So, he should have won much more fairly than what actually went down there. But anyway, you know, that's the game. And it led to one of the funnier battles I had. <laughs> so, so anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching. And like I said, a bit of a lazy upload today due to time constraints. And I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And if you did, you make sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, don't subscribe. And remember, this guy is limit. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.